everybody. Long time no see. It's really good to see you guys. So as you can see today, it's just me on my own. But Ellen is here. She's our very lovely camera lady. So I'm wondering, have any of you guys been doing the Joe Wicks videos since you've been off school? Well, Ellen and I have been, and I've been using muscles that I didn't even know existed. It's been so tough. But he does this really cool thing where every single day there is like different changes. So we make small little changes in the background and you have to spot the differences. So I thought we could give it a go today. So I'm going to pause the screen in just one second and I want you guys to try and work out what has changed. So before we do that, I'm going to give you five seconds to have a look all around me. So look at me, look in the background, look at all the things around and see if you can work out what has changed. Okay, so five, four, three, two, one. Close your eyes. Okay, everyone, I'm back. So did you spot what the differences were? Okay, let's have a look around and see if you can work them out. Anything different over here? Or here, here, on the table, anything at all? Okay, let's see how perceptive you guys are. So the first change is, I put a jacket on, so that's number one. Our second change is, Lumiere has turned into a gnome, number two. Then we have a little doggy here, number three. I changed my hairband, which is number four, and did anybody spot that the teapot changed to Aladdin's lamp? Well, that's number five. And as you guys know, I have always been about trying to learn new skills and trying to make the most out of this situation. And that's what I've been doing this week. So I'd started off with the balloon modeling, which didn't go so well. And then I started trying to paint, which didn't go so well either. But this week I've been learning magic. And I've been inspired actually by some of the things that I've read in the Bible. So in the Bible, we hear about all of the great miracles that Jesus was able to do. Like one, he turned water into wine. Now that might be something that a lot of your mummies would like to know how to do. Anyways, I've been practicing that too. So I'm going to show you my trick. So I've got my magic lamp, I've got an empty glass, and I've got a jug of water. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this water into juice. Now you guys are never going to be able to work out how I've done this because I'm completely magic now, but let's give it a go. So I'm going to take the lid off my teapot and I'm going to pour my water into Aladdin's lamp. Okay, so pour it in. It's a very heavy jug actually guys. Okay, and I'll pop the lid back on and then we're going to say the magic word, which is most definitely sausages. So ready? One, two, three, sausages! And we'll see if it's worked. Let's see if I have turned water into juice. <gasps> wow, guys, how magic am I? Look, I turned it into orange juice. Cheers. Mmm, tastes really good too. Well, now that I'm magic and we've had a little chat about this, this actually makes me think of some of the other things that I've been reading in the Bible this week. Things that are really important and have actually made me have a little think about what they really mean. So we always hear things like we should treat others as we would like to be treated and we should be kind to other people if we expect them to be kind to us and we should love our neighbour as ourselves. But what does that really mean? Well, Jesus told a parable in the Bible all about just that and it is the parable of the Good Samaritan. Have any of you guys heard of it? Well, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. So it starts off, Jesus is teaching lots of people all about the good things that they should do. And one of the people in the crowd asks him, teacher, how can we get to heaven? And Jesus says that we must be like the good Samaritan. And he tells this parable. So one day there is a Jewish man and he's traveling from Jerusalem the whole way to Jericho which is actually a really long way, guys. It could take two or three days walking. That is like us maybe walking to somewhere even further than Belfast. Could you imagine? Do you think you could do it? I don't think I could. Anyways, 
he starts off in the journey or Jewish man starts on his journey and as he's walking along the road this crowd of men jump out and they beat him and they rob him and they take all of his things and because they're so worried that he'll be able to follow them he'll be able to say what they've done they beat him up and they leave him for dead at the side of the road he's really poorly guys it's not good at all so our Jewish man is laid, very badly beaten, with lots of his clothes ripped and with no possessions, he's completely hurt. And he's laid at the side of the road and along comes a priest. Well, as we know, guys, priests are really important. They were really, really important people in the Bible times and they still are today. And you would expect that a priest would be just the person to help our Jewish man. So he comes along and he sees our Jewish man and he just crosses the road and he walks on by. Now, I know you guys are probably thinking maybe he just thought that the guy was having a rest, but that's not the case because there was blood and there was all sorts of injuries all around the Jewish man laid on the side of the road. So the priest knew that he was badly hurt and he still didn't help. So a little time passes and another man comes along and he's a Levite and they were important people in the church too. They helped the priests. But this time, do you think he stopped to help? Well, you would imagine so. But he didn't help either. He came along and he stopped and he had a little look. He looked all around and then he also crossed the road and he went on his way and left the man just laid there really badly hurt. Well, then comes along a third man and he was a Samaritan. Now in Bible times, the Samaritans and the Jewish people did not get on at all. They did not like each other and you would expect them to have lots of rise. It was like a Man United football player helping a Liverpool football player. That's just crazy. So anyways, along comes the Samaritan and you would expect him to cross the road and head on his way just as the priest did and just as the Levite did. But he didn't. He came along and he stopped and he saw that the Jewish man was really injured. And he picked him up and he wrapped him in his cloak and he put him on top of his donkey. And he took him to a local inn where he paid the innkeeper lots of money so that this, the Jewish man could stay there until he was better. And he cleaned all his wounds up and he poured oil and really expensive um, different lotions and potions to make him better and to stop the wounds from getting any worse. And he left him and he said to the innkeeper, I've paid for the room until he's better, but if he is still not better, I'll come back and I'll give you even more money just to make sure that he's okay. Isn't that incredible? So guys, who in our story do you think was the really, really kind person? Who showed compassion to the Jewish man and who treated him kindly? Well, that's right. It was the Samaritan. And the strange thing is, that's the person that we would have expected least to help. And that's what's really important. So we should always love our neighbour, which in this case was the Samaritan and the Jew, and we should treat them as we wanted to be treated. So rather than just walking on by and leaving the Jewish man there really injured and hurt, the Samaritan stopped. And we should do that if anybody is ever needs help or they're upset or whatever, even if they're not our friend, even if they're somebody that we don't really like, we should always show them kindness and compassion just as the Samaritan did. What an incredible story, guys. And I wonder if this week we might be able to show a little bit of compassion like the Samaritan and we might be able to be kind. Like, for instance, if your brother or sister is really bothering you and they're in your room all the time and they're maybe pinching your stuff and they're just being so annoying, we might want to just tell them to get out and to go away and to stop taking our things. Well, what about if this week we tried not to and we said, OK, come in and you can come and play. And we were kind to them and we shared our things. And we were really nice. Wouldn't that be fun? Okay, guys. So I'm going to go and I'll catch up with you very soon. And we'll try another spot the difference then. I hope you have a lovely week.